Insulin and weight loss. What exactly makes these two so dependent on each other? If you dig through a little bit of fat loss research, you'll see right away that insulin is very closely connected with burning fat and losing weight. In fact, without reducing insulin, there's almost no way we could burn a substantial amount of fat no matter how hard we exercise and diet. And even though most people have heard about insulin spikes not being good for weight loss, the average person still doesn't truly understand why. Well, my hope is that today I can explain this in a way that anybody can understand. It all starts with you eating food. When you eat food, the chewed up food particles get broken down further in your stomach into very small parts and then they pass through your intestines at which point your body absorbs and breaks down those nutrients and calories again and dumps them into your bloodstream. These broken down nutrients can't just jump into the cells that need them for their daily functions without some kind of help. That's where insulin comes in. Insulin is a hormone secreted by your pancreas and it gets released into your bloodstream when your body senses that blood sugar has increased. Very high blood sugar levels are not good for you and your body knows this. So insulin acts as a bridge between your cells and the sugar found floating around in your bloodstream. Without insulin, your blood sugar would be very high because your body wouldn't be able to get that sugar into the cells. This is actually pretty much what type 2 diabetes is. When people are insulin resistant, which means that insulin isn't doing its job, they usually wind up being labeled as a type 2 diabetic, which means that they need an external source of insulin, for example, either a shot or a pill to get that blood sugar down. So what does all of this have to do with fat loss and weight loss? Well, whether you eat pasta, brown rice, or drink a can of soda, all of it will eventually be broken down and it will be blood sugar floating around in your bloodstream. The only difference is that whole high fiber carbs like brown rice will take a lot longer to digest which means that the sugar will be released into your bloodstream at a much slower pace while the can of soda will pretty much be released all at once. When it's released into your bloodstream, slowly you give your body a chance to actually use it over time so you won't require quite as much insulin which leads to less of it being stored as fat. Before insulin starts storing blood glucose into fat cells, it will first store as much of it as possible into your liver for later use. Unfortunately, the liver can only hold a limited amount of blood sugar and then the excess starts to get dumped off into your muscle cells. Now your muscle cells can hold more of this glucose than your liver can, however they also have their limit. By building more muscle, you're going to be able to increase this limit and use more of this blood sugar for your muscles rather than storing it as fat. However, again, even the most muscular person on the face of this planet is going to have a limit of how much of this blood glucose can actually be used by the muscle cells. Once that limit is reached, we hit a point called spillover, where the sugar that came from mostly carbohydrates in your diet will begin to be stored in fat cells in order to lower the sugar found in your bloodstream back down to normal levels. So insulin is an anabolic hormone that causes weight gain and growth. The opposite hormone to insulin is a catabolic hormone known as glucagon, which is released when your blood sugar drops too low. Glucagon, just like insulin, goes in and acts as a bridge between the stored energy in your cells and your bloodstream, except it has the inverse effect. So it pulls energy from your cells and dumps it into the bloodstream. Before your body will start pulling fat from fat cells for energy, it will first pull stored glucose from your liver and your muscle cells. This is why so many low carb diets work. When you don't have that many carbs, it's easy for your body to use up the carbs stored in your muscles and your liver and then proceed straight to burning more fat for energy. This is the same reason why ketogenic diets work, except an added benefit to the ketogenic diets is that your body becomes more efficient at using fat for energy, which means more fat will be burnt. Now another thing that you have to know is that while insulin is up, glucagon is always down. And the same thing goes vice versa. 
which means when insulin levels are elevated, you're not going to be burning any fat. In fact, insulin will block you from doing that. Insulin has shown to also block leptin, which is a hormone that lets your body know that you're full. Consistently high levels of insulin are usually associated with leptin resistance, which means that your body is going to become resistant to the hormone that's supposed to signal to your brain that you're full and that you should stop eating. So as you can see, by having high blood sugar levels and high insulin levels, it's a vicious cycle that usually results in weight gain. So hopefully you understand that by now, but now you're probably wondering, well what do I do to lower insulin and blood glucose levels? To burn more fat. And the number one thing that you could do is limit your carbohydrate intake and your food intake in general because fat and protein won't spike insulin quite as much as carbs, but even though it's less, they'll still spike insulin levels. Low glycemic carbohydrates or slow digesting carbohydrates have always been suggested as alternatives to refined simple carbohydrates that are fast digesting. And even though I agree with this, something you have to understand is that simple carbohydrates like soda will give you a much higher insulin spike however your insulin and blood sugar will come crashing down a lot faster after the digestion process than something like brown rice for example after the crash glucagon will be released to pull energy back out to normalize your blood sugar levels brown rice won't spike your insulin quite as much however your insulin levels and blood sugar levels will remain at a moderate level for a lot longer so in a way, you're getting the same amount of insulin anyway. This is why you can still gain fat eating healthy foods. This is also why I always talk about portion control and limiting your total daily calories and your total carbohydrates to burn fat. Obviously, it's going to benefit you a lot more to have the brown rice than having a can of soda. However, remember that spillover into your fat cells can still happen even with the healthy food. Fruit quinoa and sweet potatoes can all still turn into fat. Limit your total daily intake and go for a limited amount of low glycemic carbohydrates since they don't spike your insulin quite as much and they make you feel better throughout the day. And from the exercise standpoint, you want to build a lot of muscle to be able to absorb more blood sugar. The best way to improve insulin through exercise is through heavy strength training with weights to increase your lean body mass. I'll go into strength training's effect on insulin in a later video. That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you guys out. Please make sure that you leave this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, comment below and subscribe to this channel to see more tips and tricks just like this one. I'll see you guys next time. Pump it.